friends in the 33rd module we are planning to discuss modernism as a notion and modernism in the indian context the concept and meaning of modernism will be introduced beginning with the western idea of modernism where it first emerged and indian modernism too is analyzed modernism is understood in its social concept in indian perspective then art practices pertaining to this period are looked into few artists and their works have been discussed who can be placed in this particular period it is hard to define the characteristics of modernism across the world and fix any particular time period for it it primarily resulted with the coming of industrialization capitalism and the beginning of globalization however its features differ from place to place few artists who whose work can be placed in this era have been discussed ramkinkar bej shows a substantially different approach in his works which places him apart from the other bengal school artists who followed shantiniketan academic style his works can therefore be called modern in their approach other artists also have been discussed Modernism normally is associated with the notion of avant-garde. They are seen as the champions of new age and that is why phrases like the heroic spirit of modernism are often used. The faith in reason, logic, rationality though is considered as the driving thought of of modernism, the notion of modern is understood differently by different scholar in different contexts. Broadly The dawn of modernism is considered to be in the second half of 19th century and movements like realism impressionism post impressionism are the inaugural art movements of this phenomenon Many attempts have been made to define the term modernism and uh, fix a date to it Pam Mincham defines the term modern thus in general term what became became known as modernism was synonymous with overall and change even ab- abandonment artists musicians and writers renounced traditional art forms during the 19th century in what yes gombrich calls a permanent revolution following by a search for the new standards it is not that more conservative forms of music dance art etc disappeared rather that they were not synonymous the modern although just why remains a, a contested issue after all if something happens during the modern period how can it fail to be modern these and other questions are fundamental to an understanding of the developments of art generally designated as modern this modernism coinciding with many socio cultural changes like industrialization capitalism globalization urbanization seems to have taken place as at different times in different countries or cultural zones these times may not have been too far apart from each other but definitely different in their impact and penetration society at large across the world came to be affected by modernism and visual arts too showed this impact in an extreme way however it is difficult to assign any particular characteristics to modern art this is almost the beginning of a trend which leads to contemporary art where there is a lot of individuality pam michem goes on to say at times it is difficult to see just what it is that characteristics art in the modern period the skills traditionally associated with the sculpture are clearly ab- absent from the work of duchamp or uh, bruthers yet the repeated reproduction of the works in art books testifies to their importance in art history modernism in art seems to be implicated in a kind of crisis about ab- about its own object of desire which is to say that artist uh, fetishized objects perceived to fall outside of the traditional remit of art 
at the same time there was a requirement to self consciously consciously interrogate art's own internal usual formal and uh, fu functions this uh, imperative gave the modernist movement a seemingly undisputed status in identifying the only significant art of its time uh, we will have to shift our focus to modernism in india geeta kapoor who has written extensively on it writes modernization in india is a real if incomplete historical process dating from the british colonial enterprise the process dovetails with uh, the efforts of the post independence indian state to establish though a large public sector and a planned economy a balanced growth of industry thus in her essay on modernism in india geeta kapoor looks at the socio political phenomenon of modernism as it arrived in india modern art in india as is the case across the world was a product of these social changes and thus it is extremely important to understand the social context of the time and the rapid changes taking place in order to place the art of the time as well uh, sonal khular looks at the same period of indian history and analyzes modernism in india in her latest work she writes recent scholarly efforts to decenter modernism have drawn attention to the critical pathway to modernity forged by artists and the intellectuals in non western and post colonial societies exposing the limits of uh, eurocentric histories of modernism and modernity they emphasize the need to examine cultural flows or terms more precise and ethical than what uh, uh, ming tiampo called cultural mercantilism on the tendency to see influence as unidirectional and universally uh, uh, flowing from west to east by this logic non western cultural cu cultures came to supply uh, raw material to the to the production of euro american modernism they can serve as export markets for those modernisms but cannot be sites of creative expressions or innovations tempo's critique is closely related to what parthamitra has termed the picasso uh, manke syndrome whereby the citation of non western art by european modernist exemplified by picasso's turn to africa and oceanic culture is viewed as original and radical while the citation of western art by an indian artist such as gagnanath tagore is regarded as uh, derivative and uh, inauthentic over the decade over the past decade art historians have enriched and expanded what we understand as modernism analyzing discourages and practices in great britain and the soviet union as well as mexico brazil senegal nigeria vietnam china japan iran and pakistan they have excavated unknown or little known artists and artwork casting new lights on modernists varied from and multiple lives alternative modernism in case of india as well as the rest of the world have also been proposed supriya choudhary in her writing highlights the fact that modernism in india remains elitist and restricted penetration of absorption level differed also there was a constant debate on modernism as western influence as opposed to india's inherent aesthetic tradition and a search for a unique indian modernism it is imperative that we will look at her introductory passages to understand these debates further the distinction between modernity modernization and modernism are particularly complicated in the case of india but remain crucial to a historical understanding of the modern in all its senses modernity as a social and intellectual project and modernization as its means are associated with the influence in india of europe and enlightenment rationality from the 18th century onwards modernism as 
and aesthetics is far more limited in period and scope. Nevertheless, just as recent cultural criticism has proposed, the existence of alternative moder modernities no, not, not native to the West, so to our attention has been drawn to alternative modernisms or modernisms at large. The question of periodicity as of location is complicated by the historical fact that modernism as an aesthetics was simultaneously restricted and elitist and international and democratic. In India, moreover, the impact of the style of European modernism was intensified by the belief that its internationalism suited the experience of modernity and would further the modernization of public space and cultural life. A politics of modernism, setting this perception, again a counter-argument that saw modernism as an essentially Western, Western mode opposed both to tradition and to national or local experience, emerges in the early 20th century. Raymond Williams' phrase, the politics of modernism, may remind us of another problem that he, he posed and left to some extent unanswered. When was modernism? This is the question that has been asked with particular urgency by Indian cultural critics, such as Gita Kapoor. And interestingly, Kapoor's answer appears to involve a sense of the modern as a state of freedom. That is, as a, as a set of social and historical conditions. Indeed, Kapoor argues that the characteristic features of Indian modernism, as perhaps of many post-colonial modernisms, is that it is manifestly social and historical, rather than being poised, as in the West as a hypostatis of the new. Whether or not one agrees with Kapoor's, uh, Kapoor's description of Indian modernism, his uh, Bhava's notion of the time-lagged colonial moment within modernity might serve to furnish the argument that modernism too was a late phenomenon in India. In fact, however, this is not the case, both in respect of the influence of European modernism ideas. And in the development of indigenous modernism, India offers striking evidence of the emergence of a new aesthetic in the first decade of 20th century. Partly, this is because of the cultural work carried out by a highly educated bourgeoisie, uh, responsive to the latest international development. But more importantly, it is rooted in the political and social circumstances, in the dispute over a national style and in the struggle to find an authentic modern identity. As Parthamitra urges in his account of the triumph of modernism in Indian art, the study of influence so integral to the discipline of art history is not finally useful in understanding the complex mechanics of this process. It is true that by the end of the 19th century, the growth of a cosmopolitan culture distributed over great urban centers located all across, across the globe. A virtual cosmopolis in Mithra's phase is conductive to the transmission of ideas. But at the same time, the pressure of historical circumstances and the political imperatives as well the creative energy of the locals tend to disrupt and uh, uh, reconfigure the patterns of reception. Uh, in, on this background, we will discuss some of the artists. D.P. Roy Chaudhary uh, is one of the most important of them, uh, who was born in 1899 and lived till 1975. Partha Mittar introduces him with the following words. Devi Prasad Roy Chaudhary, widely regarded as the most important sculptor of late colonial India, was the scion of a Bengali Zamindari family or Punjabi extradition. Controversialist, imperious, proud of his good looks, intelligence, noble descent and physical powers with an innate sense of his own genius, Devi Prasad cut a larger than life figure. In addition to painting and sculpture, he wrestled, played the flute, shot big game and wrote short stories 
in the spare time. Inspired by Michelangelo and Rosa, he cast bronze monuments, uh, mo monument groups six to nine feet high that celebrated the trials and triumphs of the laboring man. Roy Chowdhury was deeply influenced by Rosa. About his works, Ratan Parimu writes, Roy Chowdhury attempted large-scale ambitious monuments during the 1940s and early 1950s, such as Triumph of Labor and Martyrs Monument, modeled on Rodha's masterpiece, Burgers of Calais. Making effective use of movement, gesture and grouping, they are marred by the hollow rhetoric of neoclassical sculptures. However, they show the sculptor's preoccupation with Indianness and patriotism by using Indian models and depicting Indian life as, as had been done by the Bombay academicians. His choice of subjects show the socialist stand that he wanted to take. One of the sculptures he made was Travancore Temple Entry Proclamation, which he completed in 1930s. This was to mark the entry of untouchables in the South Indian temples. His treatment of his work is clearly demonstrated in the work Triumph of Labour. Mitter states, Devi Prasad road makers were not simply labourers struggling to uh, dislodge a massive, massive boulder. They were dominable men and women wrestling with nature, doggedly, permanently, powerfully, a vision that pitted man against the elements, a well-known romantic uh, topos of the 19th century. The Michelangelo's body became his romantic metaphor for man struggling as much against the elements as against injustice. His question of emotional power with physical strength was closely connected with his obsession with his own body and physical culture. He took an almost sexual pleasure in forcing obstinate metal or clay into shape. Devi Prasad loved to dwell on the wiry musculature of his workers, revealing their bones, veins and sinews through their flesh, often creating as an ecorche. With female figures, he chose to bring out the fleshy, earthy voluptuousness of peasant women in contrast to the emaciated uh, wives of the Bengal school. He was also the first native principal of the Government College of Art, Madras, from where he retired in 1957. This school of art will be discussed in details in the next module. Sadananda Bakre, 1920-2007 Bakre studied sculpture at JJ School of Art and was part of the Progressive Artist Group formed in 1947. He worked at the studio of sculptor, sculptor Farke in Mumbai at a young age. He had an experimental temperament since his college days and did not like the realistic style of art that was taught at his college. He potentialized the human form by transforming it into a novel puzzle with the distortion, fragmentation and partial elimination. His canvases are prominently executed in a sculptural manner depicting geometrical grids and abstract forms in a two-dimensional pattern. The bold, bright and vivid colors are used to highlight the contrast of straight and curved lines, creating a sculptural effect. The artist's preoccupation with abstraction was inspired by Paul Klee's lyricism and Picasso's deconstructing forms. Amanda Segal, another uh, sculptor from, from Delhi, from 1922 to 2007, his work was where his reactions to the society and world around him and portray several social issues. His mural on the walls, Vigyan Bhavan in Delhi, was almost destroyed. In an exceptional act, he filed a case against the government of India and won. This has raised significant questions on the status of ownership of public art and a society's responsibility towards art. In his own words, there is immense pathos and suffering in the society and even if you want to withdraw yourself, you cannot. There is so much media exposure that is already bringing out all the ter terrorism and aggression as it exists in society. But as an artist, if I create, 
I receive my inspiration from the environment. Naturally, all this comes comes forth in my work. When India was partitioned so many years ago, people were without shelter, food, and so on. I created the work, the cries unheard about people who left hurt and and home. These are works that become historic because they express the times. I created it not because I wanted to, but there was no way of escaping all this. When I get inspiration from the environment, I have to create. He looks at various socio-political situations across the world. His work, Anguished Cry, reacts to situation in Middle East. His works are part of the permanent collection at Museum of Modern Art Paris and Robben Island Museum, South Africa. Dhanraj Bhagat, from 1917 to 1987, began wood carving in around 1950. He absorbed the simplicity and uh, naivety of Negro sculpture. Under the influence, he developed a type of distortion and stylization of the figure in which proportions are elongated and sharp angles and body joints are turned into curves to look like organic forms. The total sculptural object is conceived in terms of linear solutes instead of an emphasis on three-dimensionality, despite its volume. Ideas of rhythm and growth also contribute to such ly lyrical stylization because of which Dhanraj Bhagat could be regarded as the first Indian sculptor to work on the basis of definite ideas. His characteristic uh, sculptures embodying these elements are those based on musical themes. His tree of life is almost like a calligraphic pictograph in a space. His work also reveals the influence of Indian folk art and terracotta traditions. Bhagat is one of the first to usher in what might be called the iconic wave. One of the dominant currents in sculpture of the 1960s, the other examples of which are the works of Mahendra Pandya and P.V. Jankira. Pradosh Rasgupta studied who lived between 1913 to 1991, uh, studied at the Madras Art College under K.C.S. Panikkar. Quest for internationalism and nativism at the Madras school resulted in shifts initially, but the two tendencies persisted simultaneously with time. This can also be seen on Pradosh's work. The idea of organic growth also underlines the sculptures of Pradosh Dalgupta, who continued the modeling tradition, producing figures with bulbous forms, not always aesthetically pleasing, like Dhanraj Bhagat, he too was a teacher and a number of young sculptors studied under him at Calcutta. For his bondage, uh, in its surface treatment and posture, eventually Rodha is the model. Subsequently, during the 1950s, he turned to a lyrical stylization of the human figure using both elongation as well as exaggeration of volumes. Ram Kinkar Bhai, from 1906 to 1980, Ram Kinkar began his education under Nandalal Bose in 1920 at Shantiniketan. He took up unconventional material like cement to make sculpture instead of marble or plaster of Paris. Parthamitra writes, In the 40s, Ram Kinkar became a man obsessed with uh, re re realizing his grand designs. His heroic images of the Santas were some of the most memorable ever produce, produced in India. His choice of course, uh, unconventional material such as rubble, cement and concrete uh, uh, commensurate with the ruggedness of their lives. The artist, however, offered a very mundane explanation of his use of cement. He simply could not afford the bronze. About Ramkinkar Bej, Parimu writes, perhaps the first truly creative sculpture in India was Ramkinkar Bej, whose work of the late 40s and 50s were not commissioned. They were fresh and personal, going, going beyond the limitations, rigidity and complacency of academism and realism practiced by the preceding generations of sculptures in Calcutta and Bombay. Even before international influences reached India, Ram Kinkar appears to have intuitively arrived at novel ideas. The medium he consistently employed was liquid cement, the hand of which the influence of Rodha and his pupil 
Bordele could be could be traced. Although Ramkinkar's work are based on Indian life, he conceived his sculptures as independent objects in outdoor settings. The idyllic Shantiniketan setting was beautifully used by him to establish harmony between his culture and the nature. This has been achieved by means of furrowed coarse surface resembling that of tree trunks and rocks, giving the sculptures the same weathered look as the wooden surroundings. The natural movement of the human body, stretched legs, gesticulating arms and thrusting heaving uh, torsos were integrated to give an inner vitality and the pulsating life to the sculptural mass as in the Santhal family and way to market. Shankar Choudhury, 1916-2006 Shankar Choudhury studied at Shanti Niketan under Ramakrishna Baij and worked much in metal. Henry Moore, an English sculptor of early 20th century, uh, influenced artists in India and one of these artists was Shankar Choudhury. One of the early sculptors to respond to the work of Henry Moore was Shankar Choudhury. Under his leadership, a turn was given to teaching sculptures in Baroda uh, from the mid-1950s onwards. Shankar Choudhury introduced the attitude of going back to the fundamental as had been shown by Brankusi, Gabo and Moore. The tenets of which are the loyalty to material, three-dimensional palpability, the activizing of space through juxtaposition of solids and voids. A sculptural object was treated as an organism in its own right and not as a substitute of any other reality. These qualities are found in Chaudhary's carving as well as uh, metal sculptures. In his use of simplification and surface treatment of convex and concave planes, there is an indebtedness to Cubist sculpture. Shankar Chaudhary's successor at Baroda was Mahendra Pandya, whose earlier carvings done during the late 50s are remarkable in using the softness of sandstone for stimulating the suppleness of the human skin, subtle indenture and bulging surfaces, creating delicate chiaroscuro effect. With Mahendra Pandya's work, uh, the Baroda school started moving towards postmodern traits.